what's going on everybody good afternoon good afternoon good morning good evening whenever y'all catch this video um i just want to come on here real quick to just give a word of encouragement to everybody out there um when yesterday when i was driving i had picked my brother up from school and we were on our way home we were listening to um Ty Tribbett and he has a song out um, where it basically says I have no other choice but to trust you and I got to thinking about that thing and I got a revelation and you know sometimes you know the Lord will cause us to go through situations where that's all we can that I'm taking my glasses off because that glare is really getting on my nerves um where that's all we really can do is trust in God, you know, because, you know, I was praying and I told the Lord, I said, I ain't got no other choice but to put my faith and trust in you because the things that I'm praying for and the things that I'm believing to happen, you know, I can't make them happen on my own. You know, it's going to take your doing, your working and your doing to do it, you know, and if I were to try to make it happen, it, it would fall to pieces anyway. Um sometimes god will allow us to go through seasons of uh patient waiting just to see you know because when we when everything is going our way or when we have the things that we want it's easy to say i trust god and you know god is going to do what he said he's going to do and what 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 but god wants to know if you still have that same attitude when you believe me for something and you have to wait on it when you do you still have to keep that same mentality when you believe in me for something and the situation doesn't look like what i told you or the situation doesn't look like what i promised you can you still praise me will you still trust me even when all hell is breaking loose in your life even when it seems it seems like god ain't gonna never come through or god ain't gonna never do what he said he's gonna do you know god wants to teach us patience he wants to teach us how to wait on him um because a lot of us have gotten spoiled because, you know, there are sometimes certain things we pray for and God do it instantaneously. It's kind of like a child, you know, every time they, they cry, every time they beg for something, there are some parents, you know, they give it to them or, you know, it, or they give it to them just to keep them from crying because they don't feel like hearing them cry. And then, you know, when the parent tells them, you know, wait, they get upset and they start throwing a temper tantrum. And that's how some of us are. You know, we, you know, when we pray for things and God answers it right then, we start to get spoiled. And so now that we're at a place where God is saying, you got to wait. Now we're sitting somewhere mad and upset and angry. When all God really wants to do is just to teach us how to wait, teach us how to be patient. You know, that's when everything is not going to come when we want it. And everything in life is not going to come easy. There are some things that we're going to have to fight for something that we're going to have to work for some things you know that we just have to be able to stand strong and believe that god is going to do what he said he's going to do and so you know that song it just it touched me so much it's another part in it that said i tried to do things my way there are people in life right now that are in situations that they wouldn't have to be in if they had to just learn how to trust god and learn how to wait on god sometimes we get to the point where we say, well, God, you taking too long. So I'm going to just go out here and make it happen myself. And the thing about God is he will allow you to go out and do whatever it is that you're trying to do. Just to, just so you can learn in the end that it's not going to work. You just have to wait on him. I'm telling you, it's just it's such a blessing when you have faith and trust in God. And not, and not to say that things don't come to try to shake your faith or to try to knock you off your knock you off your feet and not to say that the devil doesn't try to put things in your way or not saying that he doesn't present things in front of you that will cause you to doubt God or will cause you to, to stray off of that path that you're on but you just have to keep your mind focused on God and focused on his promise and focused on what he's promised you because my pastor and I'm just all over the place. I don't have a topic for this video, but my pastor preached a message on Sunday about now is not the time to turn back. And he touched on the fact of, 
you know, what do you do when God, because I don't know about y'all, but there are some things that God has promised me. God has promised, there are things that God has promised this year that he was going to do in my life, not just naturally, but also spiritually. And, you know, what do you do when it seems like God is not going to do what he said he was going to do? What do you do when, you know, because I'm the type of person, you know, I'm very skeptical of people that, you know, come and prophesy to me and say that the Lord said this and the Lord said that. There are a few people that, you know, can come to me and say that the Lord said this and the Lord said that and I and I receive it. There are some people when they tell me so, I'm just like, mm -hmm, yeah, OK, but, you know. It's kind of like, you know, because now I'm at a point where I'm just like, look, I'm tired of hearing prophecies. I'm ready to see some manifestations. And I do believe that there are some things that are going to happen this year. But then I also believe that there are some things that, you know, it's going to take time. Um, I mean, that's just where I am right now. I'm in a place of faith, not just talking faith, but walking in faith and living in faith. You know, I'm just just thinking about myself and where I am in my life how God just keeps me. God proves himself to me over and over again. You know, one thing that I know to be true is when the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If God says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. He may not come in our timing, but he'll come when he wants to come. And when he come, you know, that's a cliche. He may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. But that's the truth. Sometimes it may seem like he come, he come through at the last minute, but it's, but it's still on time. And, you know, God is, you know, and God will keep his people. He will take care of his people. Even in times where it seem like you might be struggling, when you look back and see, you can say, God kept me. God blessed me. You know, even when you go through seasons that you you may seem like, you know, you might be lacking sometimes. You can look back and say, you know, I never had to go without, you know, even something, you know, simple as maybe you may not, you might go through a season in your life where you have to live off of uh, oodles and noodles, but you still ate, you never went hungry. I mean, you know, sometimes we just have to, we have to learn how to be thankful for the little things, you know. Because the little thing, the things that we consider little things, there are people that consider them big things. I was praying on the way to work and I said, you know, as you know, as much as I'm ready to find me a new job, I'm thank you. I thank you for my job because I'm pretty sure them, the unemployment lines be wrapped around the building two or three times every day. I thank you that I have a car to drive. You know, I'm having some issues with my car and I got to take it to get it looked at. But it, it still takes me where I need to go. I can still go and do whatever it is I need to do. Because there are plenty of people walking, plenty of people that have to use public transportation. And not all of them are doing it because they choose to. Some of them are doing it because they have to. But I thank you that I got a car. I thank you that I have somewhere to live. You know, I may not, it may not be you know what people would consider the suburbs but it's not the ghetto either you know god you know he done delivered me from the projects amen some come on somebody but uh, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with the projects i'm just saying but you know after a while you ought to get to a point where you just like look you know i deserve better than this um but yeah i think for that i got somewhere to live because there are plenty of people that are living on the streets living you know, the, the homeless shelters are overflowing. They have, I'm pretty sure they have to turn people down every day when they run out of beds. I think that I got somewhere to live. I thank you for just the simple things. Thank you for my family because there are people, you know, that don't have a family. Some people don't even know who their family are. I think about, you know, children that grow up in orphanages, don't even know who their mom and daddy is, don't even know who their brother and sister are. And so they have to grow up going through life, you know, not knowing who they are, you know, not knowing, you know, what their identity is because they didn't have that relationship. I just thank you, even though, you know, my family can be a little, you know, some people in my family are a little dysfunctional, but I still love them just the same. Um, I'm just grateful, y'all. I'm just grateful, just thankful. Like I said, the things that we might consider the little things, I think is thankful that. I'm in my right mind because the the, the 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 mental hospitals, I'm pretty sure that they, they gain new patients every day. I You know, I can walk. You know, I ain't got to use no walker or no cane or no wheelchair. I ain't got, you know, I can do what I need to do. I can bathe myself, feed myself, clothe myself, and ain't nobody got to give me no assistance. I mean, those are things to be thankful for, you guys, because, you know, those things can be taken from us in just a minute. I can breathe. 
I ain't got to use no hearing aid. I got glasses, but I can still see. I can talk. I mean, you know, my heart works fine. You know, I ain't got to have no, uh, no, no, no machine. I can breathe. I ain't got to have no machine to help me breathe. I mean, come on, y'all. You know, like I said, the things that we consider little things, there are people that wish they wish they had the things that we have and we, that's why you you ain't got no reason to be ungrateful or reason to be complaining about where you are in life because there's somebody you know that wish they had the life that you have wish they had the things that you have and you sit somewhere mad and complaining because you said let me tell you this if you stop focusing on other people and what they got then you learn how to be more grateful for the things that you have you busy trying to you busy trying to compete with the joneses and you don't even know that they two weeks away from getting put out their house come on somebody i'm just saying you know stop be more focused on you know be more focused on the good that you got going on in your life because i'm pretty sure if you look you can look and see that the good things that you got going on in your life are, are way more than the bad things that you got going on in your life i'm just saying you know but anyway, going back to what I said, y'all, I went off on a tangent. But yeah, we just, like I said, I'm in a place of faith right now, just trusting and believing God. Um, I just had, I had a situation. And, and, and let me just tell y'all this quick testimony. I can't remember if I told y'all this, but y'all remember the, the last video I did when I was talking about how, you know, my boss had cut my hours back because he hired all these people. And so I think it was last Monday. I come to work, tell me why the man done gave me my hours back. Come on, somebody. When I tell, see, I told you the Lord takes care. I mean, and even when I, you know, and even when I was working less hours, I, you know, I wasn't struggling. You know, I still had money to do to th take care of the things I need to take care of. But, you know, I think, you know, thank God that the man decided to give me my hours back. I'm, you know, God makes the way he looks out for his people. I'm just in a place of faith right now, y'all. And then... You know, I had a situation where I was trying to apply for a loan, um, and the and, and the loan didn't come through. But even but I you know was able to take care of the things that I need to take care of. And this I mean, and looking back at it, you know, a lot of times them loan companies have a way of trying to trying to jip you out your money, or trying to, you know, trying to trick you out of some money. And then them interest rates be just you know be so crazy and so wild, but even still you know the lord made a way for me to do take care of the things i need to take care of i still got gas in my car you know the bills at home are paid we got food to eat we we, we doing good y'all you know the bible said i've been younger now i'm old but i've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread and the lord is my shepherd i shall not want you know, come on, y'all. God is ahead of my life. And if God is ahead of your life, you ain't ever got to worry about going without. You ain't ever got to worry about, you know, not having enough. I'm, I'm just, I'm just blessed. I'm blessed, y'all. I'm blessed, blessed and highly favored. It's, I can't even, I can't even describe it all. But anyway, that's all I want to say. Um... Any announcements? Anything I need to say? I hope to see some of y'all at the blackout. The blackout is um, July the 15th and the 16th. Um, July, everybody's going to be going to Six Flags. And then Saturday is the actual um, event at the Crow's Nest um, in, in Georgia, I believe it's from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. The tickets are $20. Well, no, actually now they're $25 since it's past April 1st. But you can send the payment through PayPal um, to sweet, the letter N, greet, C, at gmail.com. And then I believe they also selling tickets at the door. But, I mean, it'll be easier for you to just go ahead and pay the money through PayPal. And then, you know, Candy sends you the ticket in the mail. And you do it that way. Um anybody you know looking for hotels they said that the hotel any hotel by the airport is in close vicinity vicinity to uh the blackout actual event um you know now the six flags uh outing is not mandatory that's just something you know to like to be able just another way to mingle and you know to meet other people and network and things of that nature but i know you know not everybody 
is into your amusement parks. Not everybody's gonna be wanting to walk around in the heat, but you know, the the, the actual event is on the 16th at the Crow's Nest, starting at three o'clock. Um, so I hope to see some of y'all that I didn't get to go last year and watching everybody's videos and watching the footage. I was just like, man, but um, I'm planning on being there this year. Um, but anyway, yeah, y'all, I think that's it. So, um, yeah, y'all, just like this video, comment down below, and I will see y'all probably Friday for Mary Mary. Peace.